Hi everyone. I'm I'm really really glad to be here. So thank you really much for this invitation, Adam. That's great to be here. We have a few hours tomorrow morning to do some sightseeing in Prague. So I'm really like waiting to do that tomorrow morning. So if you have any tips or hints, what shall we see nearby? I'll just uh, later on, uh, give us some hints, please. Uh, my name is Kamil Bolek, and by profession, I watch YouTube. That's like something what I do from the last eight years, I guess. Uh, but the lucky thing is I do not have to watch every video or every piece of content on the internet that there is because I have a really, really unique and very great helicopter view on the market. As you already had, uh, I'm the board member of CMO of LTTM, which is the biggest influencer marketing group, uh, not only in Poland, but to be honest, also in CE region. Uh, if we count the numbers, depending on what numbers you look up to. Uh, and uh, we have like different perspectives at, on, on the market and on creators economy that we have because on the one side we are a uh, multi uh, multi channel network and the partner of YouTube so we network YouTube creators and we have like dozens of them and thousands and hundreds of, of, of YouTube creators under our uh, wings and umbrella uh, we are also an influencer marketing agency and we do a lot of collaborations between brands and influencers and also we do gaming and metaverse marketing lately so we have those three perspectives and why i'm telling you this stuff because for me it is a beautiful research sample uh, from my point of view, I have access to unique data uh, because the content from our creators, it, they account for 12% of total YouTube viewership in Poland. So this is quite a lot uh, for me and we can check uh, who watches what, what clicks, what don't, what people like, what is interesting, what is funny, what's not funny, where the uh, attention is dropping, when the attention is rising, what are the conversion rates, and so on and so on and so on. So we do not do content based on our gut feelings, whether something is nice, funny or not, and our creative director said, no, let's do that th this way because I think it's funny. We don't. We see things and so we see content through data that we have access to. Moreover, we do quite a lot of cooperations between brands and influencers. We work, work directly with the biggest brands. We work with media houses or agencies or local partners, as for example, Adam in here in Czech Republic and other agencies. Uh, so we drive our knowledge and our best practices from the experience, from the practice, from uh, these uh, campaigns. Uh, we work work on every branches and in every industries. We do PR campaigns, we do CSR campaigns, uh, performance marketing for e-commerces, uh, I don't know, awareness campaigns for the biggest FMCG brands and so on and so on. So there are lots of many different perspectives there and from the lots of markets as we are expanding now uh, in the region in the Europe. And from the, all those data we have and all those insight we have based on those data, this is something I would like to share with you today. So as I've already told you, uh, I've devoted last, I don't know, eight, seven years of my career for talking about influencers and influencer marketing, educating about the industry, uh, teaching how to do campaigns, teaching how to measure influencers and like having real hard data, whether it works or not. And the feeling I have is the longer I work, the more, the, the more work there is to do. Because the market has expanded really, really dynamically. And there are like really, really uh, a lot of myths and a lot of uh, lies on the market, a lot of scams, a lot of frauds, uh, frauds, and a lot of misunderstanding of how the whole industry works. And this is somehow funny because those are some headlines from Polish media and one portal, one media can have like totally contradictory headlines uh, in the newspapers. For example, we have uh, uh, statistics that every 96% of Poles follows at least one influencer. Now, that's not true because 96% uh, of Poles of Poles between 15 to 55 years old, to be exact, right? I like to be exact. Uh, so that, that's the first thing. But on the other hand, we have um, the head, headlines that influencers are hated, they are buggers, they are tricksters, uh, they're all in one, they're frauders, and it's like no one likes influencers uh, from the consumers. 
We also have headlines that almost half of the teenagers in Poland wants to be an uh, Instagram or TikTok or YouTube star. That this is like the dream job. Everyone wants to be an influencer. And in the same time, you can have like the week later a headline that YouTuber is the least respected profession in Poland based on the research they made lately. So the same like think, uh, totally different outcomes. We can also ask consumers whether they follow influencers and if, whether they trust the recommendations. Do you buy products influencer shows? No, we don't. Influencers recommendations don't work. And in the same time, in the same month, even we can have a campaign that Coral, an uh, ice cream company based in Poland, Polish brand, had to open new product product lines because they, in cooperation with Ekipa, one of the most popular influencers in in Poland, they had to had to open new production lines to produce one million ice cream per day to fulfill the demand because the influencer marketing campaign was so huge and it blew up the market. So, it's okay. Those are media headlines. They are made to be clicked. They are made to generate discussion. They are made to be somehow, I don't know, uh, it even drives me crazy and mad just to for the people to comment. But the problem is, if we mix gossip media or those headlines with professional influencer marketing, and when agencies, networks, or so-called experts start using the same language or start using data uh, they base their, their business decision on. In consequence, of course, clients are following them and they burn tons of money on wrongly done influencer marketing. And this quote is real. One of uh, most, most of the most recognizable social media experts in Poland wrote publicly something like this in the internet that influencers credibility is measure, measured by Instagram swipes. This is influencer marketing. It is hard to measure anything here, yet we have to present these numbers to the client somehow. We also have such uh, rankings make, for example, made by Forbes. I think you know Forbes. It is also present in Poland and each year they publish a ranking of the most influential people of the Polish marketers. Of course, the advertisers and agencies read those rankings and base their decisions. Um, mm, yeah, they make these decisions based on such rankings. I will get back to this ranking at the very end of my presentation. We also have a lot of US scientists or your US biggest companies that produce a lot of content about influencer marketing. Based on data, I will not use the word on B data because we are live and streaming, uh, but I will later on show you what data those uh, analyses are based on. So this is the problem I observe uh, during those seven years, that those two words are totally mixed up. The word of like YOLO influencer marketing and Insta models and everything everywhere with influencer and let's do something with influencers. And the biggest brands, biggest agencies making professional influencer marketing based on data. And the first very, very wrongly uh, and the basic, the most cliche thing is who or what we can call an influencer. Because I don't know if you do also have this in, in check, but I have an impression in Poland that if anything's moved somewhere in the social media of in the internet, that's an influencer. Yeah, if you see someone picturing their food, yeah, those are influencers. Yeah, funny guys like of the photographing everything they see. Anything anywhere, if there is something posting something on Instagram, those are influencers. For us, for me, it's not totally the case. We have free like those scenic fanon conditions, those conditions that have to be fulfilled uh, for the something on the internet that we can call an influencer, whether it's it or she or he. And what do you think? What are those three fi fundamental things that something or someone has to have, uh, then we can call it an influencer? What is it? Or what do you have in check maybe? Who can we call an influencer? Okay, some fan base, so they have their reach. They have their community gather around the influencer. That's the first thing that differs them from traditionally uh, understand celebrities. If we have a top known uh, face, a top known celebrity, 
with no or organic reach, with no community, it is not an influencer for us. It is endorsement marketing. It is a celebrity endorsement, something. We can have an ambassador and then face on the billboards or endorsing our brand. But if we do not have community, we have to buy media then. So it's not influencer marketing for us. What else? Two other things. Fan base is one. What do we pay influencer for? They, we pay for the reach. We pay, pay for... Uh, those, those would be the consequences or uh, as somehow the variables, whether they are good influencers or not. Okay, the creativity, we are very close. Not only the creativity, we pay for their content, right? So we paid for that. There, there is their creativity. They produce content for us. I do not uh, have to know how to make great TikToks because I can't. <laughs> yeah, I pay influencers to do great TikToks for me. I do not have to know how to make engaging YouTube video that would uh, take the, I don't know, the attention for um, 15 minutes. They do. They know how to do it. This is why I pay, pay uh, for what I'm paying influencers. Third thing, the most uh, basic one. What's the difference between an influencer or, for example, between a newspaper or a fan page on Facebook? They also have content. They also have. Uh, it, they do not have to be real. They have a personal image. We can have pet influencers. We can now have VTubers or uh, this um, virtual influencers, right? But if we can anthropomorphize them, so if we can interact socially with them, so they have personal image. This is the third thing. They, we pay them for their faces, yeah, for their their endorsement, and then. We have those three things. And we can say that we are in the influencer marketing. And that's the very first thing that there's a really, really mixed up on the market that we are not calling every celebrity playing in an ad that this is influencer marketing, right? And all the other things that, for example, Adam said, whether what's the image, what's the popularity, what's the trust, what's the engagement, and so on and so on, those are like the next thing, whether they're good or bad influencers. And for us, those three things are three main variables that we base our decision on. And this is also where discussion with clients begin. How come it is that the influencer with a smaller reach it's more expensive to collaborate on with because they have better image, for example, or they have a uh, top quality of the content and they make like, I don't know, cinema-like productions in YouTube. They reach maybe less people, but those two other things are much more uh, from the, uh, this side um, uh, of, of the scale, right? So therefore, we have always, we are uh, seeing influencers like the, from the general perspective, f through those three dimensions. And I would like really to focus today on the one dimension where I think is the biggest mixed up reach and numbers and the easiest way to measure it. So we can have like really simple math, which is not that simple when you read some articles, magazines, or some uh, presentation decks from other agencies. Have you ever seen this pyramid and this division for the influencers? Like there we can, yeah or no? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, that we have nano influencers, micro influencers. I had like tons of questions from journalists. How many followers do you have to, I don't know, be nano influencer? And when do we begin with mid-tier influencers, for example, and so on? Like those terms are still. And there are like dozens of analyses that shows that of course, the higher we are, the less people are <laughs> there. Of course, they have more fans or followers. And there are, that that's true. Many analysis showing that if you have less followers, you have higher engagement rate. And you also, uh, Mr. Schultz, show you those data that the um, smaller in terms of funds, the influencer, the more engagement rate uh, they have. We will get back to this in a minute. So the first question, well, the second question I have is, how do you measure reach? Anyone works in marketing from you? How do you, like, you can guess if not. Don't, you, you do not have to say that you work in marketing. You can guess. How, do, how would you measure reach? Stati okay, what statistics? Okay, we have impressions. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Okay. Deeper, yeah, insight from the yeah, and public data. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and not in, in okay, and not in influencer marketing, in marketing, in ads. How do you measure reach? Forget influencers. How do you measure reach? Because we can have, and this is the problem. It's a totally different metric in advertising, in marketing, what we call to reach. This is a number of people who saw our ad. Yeah? Uh, uh, we can add frequency. So, for example, we can add, I don't know, reach free plus means how many people saw our communication at least three times. This is reach that we are talking about in media plans, for example. In influencer marketing, we have those three variables totally mixed together. You can have agencies selling influencers only on fan base and telling you that if influencer have 1 million followers, it means you reach 1 million people. You can say that you have 1 million views and it means you, you reach 1 million people. Or you can, ha you can have unique users, uh, not on each platform. On YouTube, you can have unique users estimation or on business accounts on Instagram, for example. You can see how many unique users saw these communications. And I think you know which <laughs> variable is the most important for us in marketing. Like, fan base is totally not interesting for us because we have data and we like measured it for on our network. What's the ratio between fans and unique users and views? And it's not that if you have thousand subscribers, you reach thousand people. That's the total bullshit. And yeah, that's not true. If you have 1,000 followers, you did not reach 1,000 people. Now you are reaching not only followers and just a small percent of the followers. Now, like on TikTok for, for sure, no, of course, now also on Instagram, you are seeing also as, an, as a user, you are seeing content not only from the profiles you, follow, you are following, right? So the algorithm are deciding whether you see something or not, not whether you follow or subscribe something. This is why this ratio, and it's 100 percent, uh, the majority of watch time in our network, and it's five billion minutes of views each month, comes from people who do not subscribe our channels. So stop looking at followers and subscriptions. Uh, if you look from uh, the um, ratio between unique users and views, it is not, all, uh, all, again, 100% and one-to-one -one relation. This is uh, really, really seenable in music, right? This is uh, somehow you know that we we'll tend to listen each piece uh, over and over again. And, uh, but yet, when we, it comes to influencers, we somehow tend to assume that if we, they have million views on their videos, that million people watched it. Like, based on our data, only one third of those views are, uh, they, they are coming from. So one unique user generated three views on average. And this is like the same thing on Instagram, whether it's for followers, for stories, and we can count it, we can measure it. We have analytics on all those platforms and we can check it. And also, if we have views or impressions, this, those are the easiest to check. On YouTube, you can see how many views something has. On, uh, on Instagram stories, you can check the views. That's easy to do. But we cannot forget that those views can differ between each other. Because we can have influencers that have, on average, 10,000 views. And each piece of content have 10,000 views. Or, and this is a case for TikTok, for example, you can have posts that have 100 views and uh, a week later, a post that have 2 million views. And on average, they would have the same number. So watch out for the average also statistics if you are not controlling the variation because it can be flat or it can be really, really uh, for making estimation how many views are going to be next time. It can really ruin your budget then. Uh, the, the, as another thing is if we are looking only at views, we are totally missing if those views were generated in our target group. For example, if you have an influencer, again on TikTok, that generated 2 million views, whoa, what a great campaign. But all of those, you made a campaign with a Czech a TikToker and all of those views come from, I don't know, States, India or Pakistan or somewhere else. Is this your target? Maybe, but it's worth checking out, 
right? Whether it is your targeted now. So that's the second thing. And the third thing, if you have a Facebook view and or Instagram view, a TikTok view and the YouTube view, one can last a few seconds, one can last, I don't know, 20 minutes. And I'm not trying to say that, for example, uh, videos on Instagram are bad because on average they are watchable only for, I don't know, five to seven seconds. And on YouTube, they are so great because on average they, for example, in our network, one views on average last five and a half minutes. They are not worse or better. They are different. You can easily have an advertising communication uh, locked in those five seconds. That's doable. But you have to be aware of those differences and to check, watch the average watch time. Even on blogs, you can check it out. Yeah, also if you're working with influencers. So you cannot put all those impressions all together in one bag and to like count them, all of them, and say that you have so many views if they're so different. So my lesson for you, that's a very advanced mathematics I have here for you. Like in influencer marketing, one not always equals one. And I mean that if you have views, million views on TikTok, it is not the same as having one million views on YouTube. They are totally different two things. And the second thing, and this is something that I think that's uh, where the most scams and fra frauds are, if you have two influencers and each of them have one million followers, you did not reach two million people. And sorry, Mr. Schultz, as I saw in your presentation, but uh, having prices for 1,000 followers or 1,000 of uh, followers on TikTok, Instagram, and so on, this is somehow misleading because we can have some, someone who, who have 1,000 followers and million views on, on his stories and someone who, ha who have 1,000 followers and, I don't know, five views on their stories or, or on their post. We have to check it. So watching only on uh, followers, uh, it is misleading and you will lose your budgets then. Also, you have to be aware of co-viewership. If I observe, if I follow two influencers, I cannot be counted twice as two people, right? As two unique users then. So you, you do not reach two million people when you work with two influencers, uh, each for a million followers. So please remember that because it's a really, really huge trap. The other thing I really often see on the market, it's engagement rate. Have you ever heard of engagement rate? If you ever see a report from an influencer marketing campaign, engagement rate is something that is always there. The engagement rate, if you haven't, you, you mentioned that we can have shares, we can have likes, we can have comments, and so on and so on. If you sum up all the interactions and divide it by reach, yeah, or and like uh, multiply by percent, you have engagement rate. Example, if you post a picture of your cat, you have 100 friends and you have one like, sorry, uh, then you have 1% of engagement rate. And this is like the very common measure, the very common variable used in influencer marketing. The higher the engagement rate, the more this collaboration with influencer costs. And there are dozens of platforms globally, not only in Poland, because in Poland also there are, that the more followers an influencer have, plus the higher the engagement rate, the more expensive he, he or she is to collaborate with. But I have a few questions about engagement rate for you. What happens if, for example, you have those 100 followers, you post this cat on Instagram, and the only person who liked it was your mom. And then she posted 50 comments uh, how cute the cat is. You reply to each of these comments. Oh, thank you, mom. Thank you, mom. Yes, yeah, stop posting me, please. Thank you. Thank you. So you have 100 comments and one like divided by 100 followers. Your engagement rate now is 101%. Because engagement rate totally do not include whether those interactions come from one person or many. Or even from me if I reply to those comments. And influencers do reply for those comments. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, for me, the best expression of engagement of someone, of, of a user watching uh, and consuming influencers' content is how much time they spend consuming this content. And the older people are, the less they post hearts on Instagram, comments on YouTube. I don't know, do you comment uh, movies on YouTube? Do you comment videos on YouTube? Do you watch YouTube? 
Okay, so why do you, what do you, don't you comment? So you're not engaged in the content? Or you are, but you are not easily uh, seen because you are visible in the watch time you generate. Yeah, we can see how many minutes you generate. I cannot see you as views or uh, I cannot see you as comments or likes. And in engagement rate, we do not have this metric. We do not include watch time in engagement rate. And last but not least, the most important question I have, maybe someone on stream will answer this question. I ask this question in every single marketing agency, media house or brand, on every lecture I gave. This one single question, maybe you have an answer. If you know any analysis, any link, any correlation between engagement rate and marketing efficiency and ROI, uh, conversion rates, anything that counts in marketing, if you have, like, I'll be, I'll be glad to change my mind on engagement rate, if you have such an analysis. I haven't seen from eight years any proof that engagement ra rate have anything to do with marketing effectiveness or, 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 or ROI. Yet, we have hundreds of clients paying for this metric. Yeah, so this is like the, the, the way that you can burn your budgets also. So if you think on this pyramid again, based on number of funds, not on based on unique users, based on engagement rates, it's like think twice whether it's relevant for you to make your business decision or not, right? So, okay, if not here, <laughs> how to measure influencers and what variables are, uh, uh, are relevant and how to measure it. First of all, you always have to know what would you like to achieve thanks to influencer marketing campaign. If you know, do not know where are you, I don't know, driving or swimming, it is hard to know whether I'm there or not. So you always have to really precisely put a goal or a target that you want to reach. Later on, you have to have in your strategy, already at the very beginning of the process, you have to think how I will measure my, my effectiveness. If those activities really let me measure those things, and then you can have a standardized tools and services from influencers. I will show you in a minute that influencer marketing for us is not a product placement, it's a bit more. Uh, and the second thing, the second line is that you have to have variables. So what I am going to measure, which variables are important for me and how I am going to measure them. So in what metrics, whether it's in kilograms, meters, views, watch time, minutes, and so on and so on. So in the common knowledge, if you ask people on the street, I just, that's, that's my guess. Uh, what's influencer marketing about? They will def their first answers would be that this is posting product placements on Instagram. And like most of studies, most, most of researchers in the US, in Europe, are focused really hard on Instagram and pr product placements on Instagram. We did a little exercise in our company. We have listed all, the ki all, all different kinds of services an influencer can provide for a brand in a campaign. Like how many different combinations are they? How much do you think are they? How many of them? Different. We can have, for example, placement, product placement, but it can be active or passive. It can be at the beginning, at the end, in the middle, and so on. Uh, we can have a dedicated episode. We can have, I don't know, a banner or, or an overlay on Twitch. We can have a link in a description or end screens and cards on YouTube. We can have a pinned comment or we can have a pinned stories on Instagram and you can have a remarketing list from YouTube and we can have somehow uh, for the search, search, search engine optimization uh, tags and the metadata of the YouTube content and so on and so on. There is over 120 of those. It is not product placement on Instagram. It's a bit more. So if you would like to multiply it by the number of influencers taking part in a campaign and prolong it in time for, I don't know, year ambassador, ambassadorship, for example, that it's more combinations and permutations that you have, I don't know, sandwiches in Subway. So that's the other thing. And you have to really focus on how to, it's statistically saying, Opera, opera, operationalization of variables. So how would you measure your goals? You cannot measure your height in kilos, in kilograms. You cannot, cannot measure credibility or, I don't know, authenticity in swipes on stories. Therefore, if you have, for example, campaign that is focused on your image, that you would like to build your brand's image, you can have awareness of your brand 
then you are focused on your reach, on unique users, on views. You can be focused on your brand familiarity, for example. Then watch time would be key because the more time people spend with your branded content, the more they know about your brand. Uh, for example, we do um, branded um, channels on YouTube for, for our clients. And watch time, not only views, are key metrics for our clients. They're really focused on what's the cost of 30 second contact with their content, not on how many views it generated, because it's a different goal they would like to achieve there. So this is how we build the biggest branded channel in Poland for Maspec for Studio Timbark. If you would like to somehow boost the image of our brand for the like big campaigns, we can also measure it. What was the difference before and after, or what was the difference between two groups? So we can have a brand lift experimental methodology here and really measure whether people who had contact with our campaign perceive our brand differently than the people who are in the control group and have never seen our campaign. And then we can measure whether it influencer it, it influence our, our brand. And we do such analysis for our clients, for example. And we, uh, thanks to those analysis, know that, uh, for example, episodes on influencers' uh, channels containing branded content, people who watched those uh, videos tend to um, uh, point the brand as uh, expert or as our fan and interesting, like 25% more often than the control group. Then we know whether it works or not. If we are more, more focused on sales, if we are, you have an e-shop, e-commerce, and you sales online, you can also measure how it works. You can have unique discount codes for influencer. Then you can count how many these discount codes were used in your uh, e-commerce. You can then divide the turnover that it generated by the cost of the campaign and have a beautiful ROAS, so return on advertising spend from your campaign. It's like life example we did, and that's it. So it's that's easy. You can also have, uh, if you can link something in the description, you can add an UTM tag and measure all the traffic that went through influencer to your e-commerce. And thanks to data provided from our clients, we, for example, know that one video uh, made on the YouTube channel of, for our client XCOM, they shared their sales data with us. We know that this one uh, piece of content sold 100 free computers and computer stuff. And the pure ROI, so the revenue, not the turnover, but the pure revenue divided by the, by the cost was uh, over 200%. That's totally measurable. They are not focused on views because no one cared how many views it got. We can also have campaigns where you collect points. And for example, we made a, a campaign for a food delivering company uh, for the uh, Pizza Portal, a campaign in which two communities were gathered around influencers, compete with each other, who, uh, which community is going to gather more points. What have you had to do to get this point? place an order on a website for at least 30 slots. Eh? One, one community was about uh, FIFA, the second one was about GTA uh, 5, two influencers competing in, uh, in this, and we know how many points this, um, uh, that they were generated in the campaign. They were at least for 30 slots each, right? Then we could divide it by the cost of the campaign, and there you have uh, six times um, back and this I can like if you are interested in any uh, branch in any industry in any type of case studies we have like two and a half thousands of them <laughs> so I can talk on and on uh, but it is measurable you can like uh, compare activities with influencers with the similar activities you have uh, for example uh, in the other uh, digital marketing activities and for example we had two creatives one ad was like the standard arts that our client have, and the other ad was with uh, image of the influencers. So the second one has had more um, VTRs so of view through rate. Less people skipped the ad uh, thanks to, to those images. And we can measure it, right, in our, in our campaigns. We can uh, see whether the sales growth, if the remarketing list gathered from the channels and from YouTubers is more efficient than the standard ones and so on and so on. Uh, we can check, for the example, year-to-year -year comparison. We did an employer branding campaign for the Edward. This is a building uh, constructing company. And they were having an issue 
that they have very few candidates applying for job. So we did a metaverse campaign for them. Uh, we brought their construction to Counter-Strike map and we could measure that they had four time increase in uh, their uh, internship candidates um, year to year uh, what, after doing this campaign. So it is also measurable. The biggest campaign, I'm finishing now, so then uh, temporary. The biggest campaign that was on Polish market was for a telecom company play and they also measure it like piece by piece, whether it worked or not. And they have also really nice approach to measure the efficiency of the campaign. And they divided their target group into two separate groups. One is uh, internet users, 15 to 34. And the second one was fans of influencers. No, like uh, whatever, when whoever um, you follow, if you follow at least three influencers, then you are a fan. Then you are fan of influencers, and they measured the um, per, uh, perception of their brand among those two groups. One only that uh, digital marketing re reached them, and the other, the radio, the other one, digital marketing plus influencers reached them. And you can see that those differences were like from seven to even thirteen percent pointed, uh, both on these product uh, variables like that's the first choice, that the best offer they have, that's that's worth uh, worth changing to, and also on this uh, scale of more branded. Um, aspects like it is brand for me and my friends, it is honest brand, it is brand, brand I can trust. It is also measurable uh, fully, also the effectiveness in numbers, whether it worked or not, that uh, they measured that uh, in the campaign with influencers in comparison to standard digital marketing, they had like a f uh, three and a half times lower reaching cost to a single user, for example, and it was also measured. So what I'm trying to say, whether it's in Poland, whether it's in Czech Republic, whether it's in the US and globally, if you're doing influencer marketing, you have to be really aware that there are like dozens and tons of scams, frauds, and so-called experts trying to sell, I don't know, followers are as CPMs and making money on people who are not fully aware how influencer marketing works. So if you see influencer marketing with relevant numbers, if you check them, if you verify those relevant data, it will work. It will work uh, because we have numbers for that. So remember that influencer marketing is not a product placement. It is like much more than that. You can have uh, like 120 different services from an influencer and combine them in full strategies. It is not uh, using famous face in your ad uh, because celebrities uh, as on, on their own are not part of influencer marketing. They have to have their organic reach this is when we call um, it influencer marketing. Uh, and likes, shares, followers, engagement rates, there are vanity metrics. You can use them, of course, to give you the first initial research results to search for influencers, uh, to help you somehow navigate through the platforms, but do not base your business decisions and do not spend your budgets based on those, on those metrics. Uh, from our perspective, it is fully professional and measurable uh, marketing tool. It has over a decade now or 20 years maybe. Uh, so it's not like we are doing it. Mm, let's do some influencer stuff and uh, we'll see whether it works or not. Yeah, we can really predict it. So if you have, I, I don't know if you have such rankings in checks, like most influential people you have, check really on what metrics it's really based. Is it like, for example, if you have popularity, you know what was popularity here? Because I checked. <laughs> it was likes plus comments plus shares plus shares. Like with different scales, so sum up together, then you have popularity. So what? <laughs> uh, the second thing, the fan base. So the more channels an influencer had, the higher the fan base was, right? So again, we the co-viewership totally didn't what well, wasn't taken into account, and of course engagement uh, with no watch time, if we, with no marketing relevance in in the many cases. And if you have even U.S. scientists and U.S. marketing gurus that post their posts on LinkedIn and we share them and we discuss about them, check how it's measured because that's my favorite thing here. It is a proof that smaller influencers with higher engagement rates are more economical for your campaign. That's my favorite part here. Average followers, like, I don't know, Kwan Kim Kardashian, 150 millions in comparison to many small followers, right? 
it is one to one total reach with followers now you know that's bullshit right because you do not reach every follower uh, moreover you reach people that do not follow you so that's the first mistake and my favorite one it's then you can if you have the percent of engagement rate they made total campaign ad impression out of it i don't know how right this is like total uh, total lie then uh, to have those numbers and uh, this this metric so watch out because it's not uh, that difficult math and if you see such quotes like the only reaction now i can have if i read something like this it's that right i am left speechless uh thank you very much if you have any question like i'm open for your questions or maybe some chats and talks with some um, some beer downstairs then thank you again um I haven't seen um, messages in the chat except for Sasha reminding that it's just you know something you you, you actually said that it's more uh, an estimate uh, and then of course uh, uh, it depends on on many more statistical data not just uh, it, not just it's number not of followers. End there, so that's great. If it's not ending on not just the number of followers, then my apologies. That's that's <laughs> great, but. Do not stop only on number of followers. Yeah, sure. Uh, I, I think that's something we can all agree on. Also, I think one thing you, you haven't mentioned, but we, we see it too, that, you know, as some people... Okay, I, it's, it's probably my fault. I'll go here. Uh, that uh, as sometimes they say, každá reklama je... Inegativní reklama je... I, negative reklama is dobrá reklama. Even the negative publicity is a publicity. Yeah, hate uh, is also engagement. Right? Hate so. is also <laughs> engagement. That's it. Yeah. So, so some people do have really huge engagement, but is that something your brand wants? <laughs> it doesn't necessarily has to be the case, right? So, uh, it's always also important to actually look through the data, even for the let's say softer metrics in terms of uh, what are actually yeah, people yeah. saying uh, any questions from the audience yeah oh, okay thank you very much uh thank you for the presentation very interesting i would like to ask uh if you use a paid promotion uh for extending the reach of the post and content of the influencers I didn't understand the beginning of the question. Pay promotion. What's pay promotion? Uh, if you use paid promotion. Paid promotion. Okay. Yeah, for yes. Extending uh, the reach. Uh, it happens. We mostly focus on the organic reach. This is what influencers are for. Uh, but we have campaigns that we also do some paid promotion. For example, that the really f on YouTube uh, really nice feature is the um, in feed. So it's outstream mode to promote, not like to uh, flash it as a pre-roll ad, but to recommend to watch for example but we also had bigger campaigns uh, in which we used influencers images in 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 a creative in an ad and then promoted as an ad but it was really like native for youtube for example so therefore it had like thousands of comments uh, below the ad that is like a like, great commercial because it was targeted on the uh, followers and fans and uh, like people who knew the influencers so then they, it worked thank you yeah, thanks. Thanks for the question. It's always the awkward moment if no one has questions. So thank you for for being the first. Uh, yeah, that's that's one one thing. Uh, you know, like uh, e even some some models are on on for 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 example for the micro or nano influencers uh, to actually uh, we've had some good experience with a kind of paper content model because those were really some small people, but we were interested in getting the stories for example for a cookbook mm -hmm. and we gathered plenty of stories we tested them in a way a bit on their own and those which were most interesting we used them again in like normal nice, yeah. uh, kind of blurbs uh in ads and it and it had really nice results so as, you, as you mentioned the one using the image of an image influencer, of yeah. an influencer these ones were usually like using more stories than images, but, but the principle is probably the same. 
and then just following up on your paid promotion, I think that this is not our campaign, but I was really impressed by it. I think Huel did it. I don't know if you have Huel. It's for the nutrition for fitness, I guess. Uh, they have re remarketing campaign uh, with uh, images of the influencers. So if you go to the website, then on the Facebook, like many different profiles, I saw ads with different faces, with different influencers, that I had that impression that every influencer recommends this product. And they, it was used only in remarketing. The, those posts are were not publicly uh, on their fan pages. So it was really also a very nice uh, thing of using um, their posts in, in paid advertising. Yep, okay. Hey, thank you for the presentation. I found it uh, quite helpful. Uh, I do have a question in your agency. Are you trying to create some like a uh, ultimate, uh, uh, not engagement number, but let's say a number, a rating, or uh, you know, so you can present it to your clients and say, okay, here is the list, and this is number one, this is two, and so on. Or no. is it a mix of you know? I think be, that yeah. I think that making one number would be a lie because it depends on what goal would you would like to achieve. Uh, if you ask like common people, people, if advertising works, people think that advertising works only if they see an ad and they go to the store and buy things. Like completely forgetting that, for example, we have a funnel, we are building awareness, and for example, we can have uh, great influencers in building awareness, but they will not uh, close the deal. They will not uh, perform and convert into, for example, e-commerces. And on the other side, we have like uh, with poor image, uh, controversial, for example, influencers, but their sale as crazy, right? So those are like different metrics, and depending on the goal, we would have for each goal to have such a number. Right. Then yes. So you have some sort of segment of influencers and saying, okay, this segment of people they do this. Yes, best they, and they, they they convert, so they yeah. do yeah. awareness, and then do... within this segment, do you have some sort of rating or some sort of. Uh, no rank no 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 we do not have like a single number because it's then it depends on the budget then it depends whether client likes the content or not whether it goes with brand or not so there are too many variables to have so it's a very custom and uh, yes. let's say uh labor intensive yes we are say, not a platform up. okay we are not a platform yeah. this is why we have so it's like, just uh, cherry picking and picking the right people for this particular uh that's right uh, ad or that's campaign right. yes yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. excellent thank you if you if you like to make this impression that's called uh, in social sciences a uh, majority illusion for example that everyone now is using something right then you, you have i don't know a few hundred of followers you do not care about the content you just want to make a spray or splash that everyone is using right now so then you can have like so that's that's many influencers and we then cooperate with some platforms but uh, in other all the other cases we have like a custom solutions for for the customers tailored for for their needs your uh, uh any 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 other questions Vashek, maybe no <laughs> uh I, i'll i'll have one maybe one last uh and that would be what what do you perceive as uh the the future trends that's uh you know something to watch out in mm -hmm. let's say next two years uh so the, everything that's under buzzword uh, creators economy i tend to see that creators are now uh, liberating themselves from advertisers and platforms if you see web free or nft market and uh, they tend to make their own products uh, or own, own, own businesses and they do not need to earn money from us or collaborating with advertisers that's really interesting because the, there are, this is a also a chance for new models to open. Uh, we began with product placement, like everyone on influencer marketing um, market had. Uh, now we are co-creating products with influencers, right? Like co-branding stuff or making new business models together with influencers because the top of them do not want to make simple placements uh, more because it's like not beneficial for them. Uh, so that's the, that's the first thing that this creators economy. Uh, I strongly believe in live commerce and shoppable entertainment uh, because uh, as someone said i unfortunately don't remember who but that e-commerce it's i don't know if i translate it correctly it, it's great for uh, buying e-commerce but it's terrible for shopping 
And uh, there is something that if we would like to go to a mall with friends, have some food, have some fun, watch a movie, then make some shopping, this is like a whole experience. We do not have it in e-commerce. And I think that live commerce um, makes it e much easier to provide digital possibilities with brand experience. So uh, whole Asia is now selling in live uh, commerce model. Uh, in Europe, it is like we are trying to learn it, uh, but I will really observe it. Plus, if you add metaverse things uh, on it and having live commerce in metaverse and uh, like what Meta is doing right now and all those virtual worlds, it's not that difficult if you have ne ever never uh, experienced metaverse. It's not that difficult to make because, for example, we use Minecraft or Roblox or Fortnite to make events for brands in the digital world. And it is Metaverse, but no one calls it that way earlier. <laughs> so uh, those, those three. Uh, do are, there are two, two questions from the chat. First one is, what is the agency fee for getting in touch with thousands of influencers? <laughs> Uh, we are not a platform, so we do not have like a fixed fee. It always depends whether we have to make, I don't know, global research on which market, what kind of influencers. If you would like to reach people playing Counter-Strike, that would be easy. If you would like to reach influencers for, for key opinion leaders in neurobiologics, biologics or astrophysics and so on, that would be like more expensive. This is why I don't, I hate this pyramid. Because what does it mean nano influencer? If I have 10,000 unique users, but in a very niche uh, topic, for example, then I would have to use affinity index and so how much percent of the target group I have, not just the number of followers. So we do not have a fixed fee for anything, I guess. There's no like a price list. <laughs> uh, and the second question is, how do you work with clients who have a different picture about influencer marketing, which is much more like putting a celebrity within, you know, product placement? So how do you... And I think that's, that's actually a, a really good question because I think many people here have the same experience or yeah. the same trouble. How to explain to clients all this when they are kind of stuck in like, yeah, let's put their Leos Mares, you know, it's like that's our... You can write me and we can try to do it together. I can show, show them my presentation uh, again and again and again. We do that for the clients. We also do it for agencies and media houses. So we work hand to hand with agencies, with their clients to educate them because we do not do, I don't know, uh, TV ads and so on. So, for example, if a big client have its own agency, uh, so and to then we are responsible for the influencer marketing part, then we work together to educate the client. So education would be key. But of of course, we have many clients that uh, want in their reports how many followers influencers had and what was the engagement rate. And that's the sad reality at the very end that some, sometimes happens. And so if we cannot change it, like, yeah, if you want, we want to pay for those metrics, then okay, after we did our best efforts to convince you not to. But if you still want to pay for those, okay, yeah, we will take take your money uh, but <laughs> for, for, for this campaign. But we will still make many efforts to educate you and to convince you that that's the wrong way. So there is oh. no like a golden solution, sorry, to yeah. education. <laughs> uh, I see someone is typing, so maybe there will be... Or looking for an emoticon. So. <laughs> <laughs> very, very sad face of... Uh, <laughs> trying to sell influencer marketing most, to most time you think someone is taping something very long is looking for an emote so. <laughs> uh, anyway i think that's it then there oh okay brilliant summary of influencer marketing i would however strongly challenge last assumption smaller influencers might seem more economical on the paper however they very rarely generate talking points and earn content around their campaigns we had campaigns where the actual earned content, reactions from other creators, stories from both viewers and creators, not to mention hundreds of blah, 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 had more impact than dedicated sponsored content. It should be an aim of a campaign to create a situation and should be counted into calculations as well. I think you don't at disagree. Yeah, at any point, I haven't said that, mm. I don't know, smaller influencer, less popular. It it was actually worse. the other way around. Yeah, no. it's, it's, it, it is hard to say who's, I don't know, better or worse. 
tell me uh, what's the brief, what's your goal, what would you like to achieve, how would you like to approach it, then we can say whether something is better or not. We can we have dozens of campaigns with like really tiny influencers because we wanted to generate content, as you said, for example, for stories. That's a brilliant approach. They knew how to they know how to make good content. Let's have thousands of influencers to make a content, then A B test it, right? What's what's work, what's not, and it's like, uh, it's, it's a great campaign. But it's not always the issue that we can we cannot have such general statements. This is why it is so hard to have one single number for the ranking. Uh, you asked because we tried to do that and we failed. Yeah, I, I think I think the the good example of those when it makes definitely sense to uh, the one actually you showed as as the flawed one that uh, Kim Kardashian yeah. will have. Uh, she might have actually right uh, less engagement, but she will generate, for example, shitload of articles around the world. That's may that's maybe the which issue, you yeah. should also put in uh, the calculation. Yeah, but in here and other probably big influencers might respond even if they are not part of the campaign, right? Yeah, and she will also definitely influence your brand image, for example, and the smaller influencers won't. But on the other hand, she can be less, I don't know, credible for the campaign. That's not yep. that easy. Yeah. So it's just that not that easy.